25 witnesses, 20 can confirm the Falun Gong, five confirm Eastern Lightning, and one confirms Tibet. Mm -hmm. If you could just give us a flavor of that, and then what needs, what do you hope to find more to add to this before going public? I think that would help anyone who's invested. Let, let me talk very briefly, and Jaya will probably talk about the Tibetan situation. On the Falun Gong situation, we're very, pretty well taken care of at this point. We've identified a fair amount of witnesses we think are very compelling stories. Uh, the Uyghurs, uh, this is the area where we're going to have to do the most investigation, uh, that and Eastern Lightning. Uh, we're just at the beginning with the Uyghurs. Uh, it's obviously going to be fairly difficult to ferret out uh, refugees. Uh, it's going to be fairly difficult to get them to talk initially. However, we do have the direct support of Kadir on this, uh, and the direct, so therefore, the support of the, uh, the uh, Uyghur Human Rights Council, Global Human Rights Council, and the uh, Uyghur American Association. Uh, as for Eastern Lightning, I don't know how much we're going to be able to get. We're certainly going to try and get one or two interviews in there. We certainly have one witness on that now. When it comes to Falun Gong, we have um, at least about 17 people 18 people who all really need to be on camera at some point, uh, who fill in different components of the story. Uh, there is one group you left out, which is doctors. And we do hope to get doctors uh, on camera, sometimes in silhouette, sometimes not, sometimes like this Taiwanese doctor who arranges operations on the mainland. We're going to try to get people like that on camera. It's going to be extremely difficult. Yeah. It's a real challenge. Um, on the Tibetan issue, the, the figures I have is that there's between 600 and 800 ex-political prisoners spread out over 12 countries. Um, I believe that we need to talk to around 60 to 70 of those, um, whether their stories will be included or not in the end, who, who knows? We, that's yet to, de to be determined, but um, I think it's, a, it's an opportune moment to say that we're um, grateful to uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama for contributing towards the research of the Tibetan issue, um, and we, you know, we're very grateful. There's a s substantial amount, um, so that that side of things is fairly handled, I would say. Yeah, I mean, the basically we may be about a third of the way in the funding uh, through the Tibetan through the Tibetan contribution. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, would put us in somewhat striking distance. These things are never, you know, you know, we understand that people tend to give money when they're reassured that there's going to be a product coming out of it, and the Dalai Lama's contribution has been extremely important in that way. Um, so I, I think that gives you a little bit of a sense of it. Now, that does involve pretty much, you know, obviously it involves Asia, Australia, it involves uh, Taiwan, it involves Hong Kong, it involves Bangkok, it involves India, uh, it involves North America, it involves Europe. The Uyghurs, for example, are mainly in Northern Europe. Uh, and we're going to have to travel around for that. I have no particular medical knowledge. Um, to what do you attribute this bulk lumbar puncture work? The, um, the spinal fluid. Yes. We're, we're, we're not at the bottom of that, to be honest. We've come across so many cases. Um, we've heard lots of different stories. It's being sold as an energy booster. Um, it's being used for medical experimentation. We've got three or four different versions of what why this is happening. Tom. We, we can't say. But Tom, Tom may have a better perspective on this. Tom, off the cuff, do you have a perspective on it? There's, there's some mm. I would like to hear from you. Exactly. Right. Yeah, well that's that's the point, you know, is that we have to we have to find out what's going on. You know, right now what we're emphasizing is what we do understand, which is, you know, there have been organs only exams. That's a very common yeah. pattern that we established. <laughs> This blood. Kind of story, right. Mm -hmm. um, which comes from uh, the last killed your investigation and this big theme. But uh, the specific question of your way of sticking the needles in the back, you, you hypothesized that it's like a puncture. I'm, I wouldn't buy that yet. You might be quite right. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's making 
That's right. That's a, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Don't attach any label to it. Yeah. Because I just don't have a clue what they're talking about. It's spontaneous. I mean, we, we've, heard, we've heard of people, you know, dying um, two hours later after these things, a uh, couple of days later. We heard, you know, there's lots of people know people who've had this done. And, and well, there's they, a lot of them. It has, you, it has some meaning by the repetition. Sure. But what the meaning is, I wouldn't even begin to speculate. Exactly. This is, where, this is where it becomes dinosaur bones. I mean, the same thing is true of the Gulja incident, that there's this, this sort of legend that surrounding the Gulja incident of several thousand young men dying shortly afterwards. Well, one way to interpret it is that they were killed and, and harvested. Uh, there is another way, which is simply that they some kind of sickness spread over the particular camp they were in, and they, they all died of that. There are questions out here. I mean, that's why I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that we are at the, the beginning of an investigation. That's why this costs 